So you want to be a sonographer, but you need to find out if sonography is the right fit for you. <laughs> I'm your girl. Let's get into it. We're going to go over the six steps I deem that is important for you to know when going on this journey to become a sonographer or to aspire to be a sonographer. So first we're going to talk about is sonography the right fit? The first step that I need you to do, I need you to go watch a few, actually wait, make sure you have, a, I need you to have your notes open on your phone. I need you to have a pen and paper, write these steps down, please. Okay. First step, I need you to go on YouTube where you are right now after this video ends and I need you to first find date in the life of sonographer videos. Okay. I want you to watch at least two of them. You don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to, but just watch them so that way you are able to decide if it's something that you could see yourself doing. Think about, you know, what the sonographer is saying about their patient load. Think about what they're saying about what they do on a day to day. Um, do they have time freedom? Think about all those things and think about if it's going to resonate with you and your life and your family. Okay. So that's the first step. The next step is to choose your two areas of interest. Okay. So sonography, our field is broken up into four major specialties. Um, and I say four major because we have a lot of specialties that you can take. Okay. You are not going to be, um, pushed into any corners. You can, once you get into something, you can expand, grow, evolve, whatever into these different things. But first I need you to pick your two main specialties. Why? Because when it comes to picking a school, you don't have schools for the millions of specialties you can do in sonography. You have schools for the major specialties. So when choosing your two areas, you have general sonography, which is your abdominal, okay, looking at liver, gallbladder, pancreas. You have your small parts like, you know, doing thyroids, doing scrotums. Yes, we do scrotums. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, you have OBGYN. So OBGYN usually fits under the umbrella of general sonography. There are some schools that only do OBGYN, but there's also more schools that do a combination of general and OBGYN. So you'll learn how to do the kidneys, liver, gallbladder, as well as how to scan babies in the first, second, third trimester, things like that. So that's one concentration. That's one area. The second is going to be vascular sonography. Okay. Do you like the vessels, arteries, veins, understanding how they work and doing um, those specific studies, working in a vascular lab, maybe working with a vascular surgeon, that's a concentration. The third one is gonna be cardiac sonography, okay? Cardiac sonography also goes by um, echocardiography and that is of the heart, okay? That is a beautiful modality. They focus on the heart. Um, if you go to echocardiography school, you're learning about the heart. I did learn that there are some schools that might also teach you like vascular as well, but the heart is your focus, okay? You're not having to branch out into all these different subspecialties. You're able to focus on the heart, okay? Which is beautiful. Um, and then, like I said about the general, there is some schools that have OBGYN specific sonography, but um, if you want to keep your options open with choosing schools near you, you might want to keep the option open of uh, a school that does general sonography and or a school that just does OBGYN sonography. So that's step two, choosing your two main areas of interest. And the reason I said two is because if there are schools located near you and um, let's say the school has a uh, general sonography and, and, um, heart. Let's say they have general and echo. Okay. If you go into the echo program, you still can branch into like vascular sonography. If you go into the general program, you can still branch into echo. You can branch into vascular, you can branch into OB. So it's like, don't feel like, oh, if I start with general, I have to be general forever because no, you do have the freedom to be flexible. Um, there's criteria that you have to follow in order to be able to uh, cross into another specialty. You have to get a certain amount of hands-on skills, but you don't have to go back to school for that. A lot of that is things you can learn on the job. If you decide to be a traveling sonographer there are a lot of places that might um, be jack of all trades like if you go to Hawaii a lot of times they do you know multiple modalities so you might learn some echo stuff while you're on a general contract in Hawaii things like that so don't feel like you're you're cornered into anything however you do need to have two specialties that you're kind of like okay with that way you can get into a program 
get finalized in a program and then you can grow from there. Okay. So let's move on to step three. Um, find, make sure you write this down. Okay. Find an accredited, accredited school through C a a h e p i'm actually going to put a little video to the side where i kind of like show you how to navigate the website um and this is just a commission of accreditation of allied health education programs um, it's their website and there's two professions you can choose you're going to choose the profession diagnostic medical sonography and then cardiovascular technology so the reason why you want to find a school from this site is because you want to find a school that is accredited many jobs you have to have um, ARDMS which is the American Registry of Diagnostic Medical Sonographer I believe that's what it stands for but ARDMS they want you to be credentialed under ARDMS. Now, there is some situations where you can do ARRT. There's some jobs that don't care. They'll hire you whether you're ARDMS or ARRT. However, going to an accredited school is going to um, be the, sm the smoothest process for you. You're going to run into more issues when you choose a non-accredited school. So I'm not even gonna talk anymore about that. Um, I really prefer people not ask me questions about that. I went to an accredited school. I've got to see for the last seven years the difference of people that go to an accredited school versus a non-accredited and I just, I would not put myself through that. So don't ask me, ask somebody who's went through a non-accredited, but going through an accredited school will cause you um, an easier pathway through this. Sonography is not easy at all. So what you don't want to do is make it harder by going a non-traditional non-accredited route and then having to do the extra stuff to be able to prove you're worthy of sitting for the boards. It's just, you know, this is, this is a video created by Teresa. So this is from my perspective. So C-A-A-H-E-P website, cardiovascular technology or diagnostic medical sonography. And I'm gonna put a video to the side, but let me go ahead and um, explain that video. So in the video, uh oh, if you're using a mobile version, this is gonna be the screen you see, and it's C-A-A-H-E-P and um, on that video, I show you the website um, from the mobile version. I show you where to click find an accredited program. And then we scroll down and um, I have you click on cardiovascular technology as well as diagnostic medical sonography. And that just makes sure that every program that's ultrasound related pops up because if you only pick diagnostic medical sonography, um, it is gonna bring up some adult cardiac, but it might not bring up all the schools that offer cardiac. Um, and then once we do that, I show you um, how to choose, your, type in your state. So type in your state and be able to see professions of all, all the professions, but then I um, show you how to narrow it down. So if you wanna only do OBGYN, you wanna only do vascular, I go over that as well, okay? Okay, so here I end up deselecting everything besides OBGYN. So that way, if you want to only specialize in OBGYN, you don't want to learn about general or anything else, um, you're able to then narrow down your search. Um, and this is for Texas specifically. So in the state of Texas, there are 23 accredited OBGYN specific programs. So I actually went to school in Ohio. That's the, I went to um, the University of Finley and it was accredited for diagnostic medical sonography. Um, I did a general concentration um, on here next, I believe I show just vascular. By the way, if you're wondering why I decided to put a three minute video of how to utilize this website on here, please know it's because I've received 
so many questions more than I can count on the amount of digits God blessed me with so I figured this video needed to be in depth so that way people knew how to use it and if you do not find the school you're thinking about going to on this website then it is not accredited and I would not go and please don't ask me my recommendation because I'm going to say no and I was surprised to find out that California doesn't have a so like just a vascular program. However, Georgia, um, which is the state I currently live in, Georgia does have a vascular only program out in Rome, Georgia. And it does allow you to click on view institution, which then allows you to see the school's website. And that's that. Okay. Next. Okay. So step four. Step four is going to research the program thoroughly before you do anything else, okay? So when I say research the program, I want you to have a sheet of paper just for school number one you're looking at, a whole sheet of paper for school number two, and just research. Find out, you know, when does school start? What's the prerequisites to getting this program? How much does this program cost? Is it in-state or out-of-state? Is the tuition for in-state versus out-of-state um, tuition different? Um, is it a you know, 12 month program, 16 month, 18 month, 24 months, how long is the program? And I want you to find, like, just try to find out as many answers to questions that you already have or that come up over time as you can before, before you email and call the school or before you reach out to a sonographer. Why? Because when you do the research, you find you find the answers to a lot of your questions. So if you have 50 questions, you might go on a website of two or three different schools and find 40 of your questions. That way you're then able to narrow down your specific questions when you email the school, call the school, or when you talk with a sonographer, okay? Um, and a big reason why I'm making this video because I get asked so often. Um, lately, I've been getting a lot of people to reach out to me from Texas because I have family in Texas and they're asking me how to become a sonographer. And I feel very I feel like a, a tape recorder so I'm like you know what I need to create a video so that way anybody who needs this information whether they reach out to me directly or you know they're just online surfing they have all that they need okay so the next thing that I want you to do um is step five and that's going to be to check the demand in your area for ultrasound, okay? If you're living in a very, very rural area and there's no hospitals, um, yeah, that's a whole nother situation. However, in your area, you need to check the demand. And when I say check the demand, you wanna see what jobs are available um, in, in ultrasound. So look on LinkedIn, look on Indeed, um, look on hospital websites near you, type in ultrasound tech, ultrasound sonographer, um, sonographer, sonography technician like there's a lot of different um aliases that you could type in but check that and see if there's a strong demand in your area find out is the demand strong for a specific specialty is the demand strong period is the demand weak if the demand is weak think to yourself would you be willing to um go to maybe a different city different state to be able to work more are you willing to commute you know what i mean and um possibly come back to the hospital that's closer to you once you have more experience since you know if there's a hospital that only has one position open you can see that the demand for that position may be high if there's you know let's say 20 other sonography students that um also look into that role so check the demand in your area um me personally, if I wanted to stay living in one state, let's say I was living in Dallas, Texas, and I'm like, you know what? I only want to live in Dallas, Texas. If I could only find heart echocardiography jobs in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to school for echocardiography. Um, and that's just how I do things because I want to be efficient. I love ultrasound as a whole. I, I love, love, love ultrasound. So I'm open to doing different specialties, but I know some people, they have this like this ache, this dream to just do, you know, one specialty and not the other. So a question to ask yourself is, would you be willing to move to another state to get the experience if needed? I have seen that happen, especially in places like um, uh, California, where it's, it's very competitive to get roles. I've seen people like, hey, I haven't had a job in years or, you know, just whatever the case may be. And sometimes they have to go to Arizona, work there for six months to a year and then come back to California. And now that they have more on their resume, they're able to get a job. So just find out what that market is like in your area. Okay. And number six, number six, I'm excited to talk about it's knock out your prerequisites early and cheaply. 
I say this because Ochatown school, school period can be, you know, costly, you know, um, especially if you're having to take on that cost by yourself or maybe your family is helping you, but you know, maybe there's still some type of gap. So when it comes to prerequisites, as long as you're taking your prerequisites at a school that the um, classes transfer over to the program you're interested in without issue, then please take it as cheaply as possible. Okay, so if there's three colleges near you and one of them is a community college, take it at the community college. You're not getting any better or worse education if you go to a university versus a community college. These schools are accredited, okay? They have to teach you certain things um, curriculum-wise in order to be able to provide that class to you. So take it as, as cheap as you can um, and uh, take it as early as you can as well. So I say that because getting into ultrasound programs can be competitive and a lot of times they go off a point system. So the more classes that you have, um, but by the time that you apply, the higher your chances are of getting in. I went in with everything, okay? I had everything. Um, we had to get observation hours. I think I got more observation hours than was needed, things like that. So just start that process early. Um, uh, save some money so that way you know the other the other money that you have can go towards the program um take classes early oh about the observation hours so to get into the ultrasound programs that i've seen to my knowledge is you have to observe so with observation hours they might say hey you got to observe five hours um you can do like it depends on your school. Some may say you got to do x-ray and stuff too. Some say you just got to do ultrasound five hours, whatever. Cool. You don't have to just do one modality. So you can get five hours in general sonography if you're applying to a general sonography program, but don't feel like you can't go um, get observation hours with the echo or with vascular. And I say that because if you have not applied to the program already and there's another program that that school offers and you find yourself more pulled to doing vascular or heart than general or whatever case may be, switch. You can switch before you even get too far ahead. So do observation hours, do more than what you have to if that's going to help you get closer closer to making an informed decision about what school and what program you're going to choose for a long portion of your professional career. So there's that. I'm excited that you even want to be a sonographer. I love being a sonographer girly. I love ultrasound. I've been doing it nearly seven years and I still have that fire. I still have that excitement. And this video is for you because I want you to make sure that sonography is a great fit for you. I don't want you wasting time, money, and I want people in this field to be alongside me that love healthcare and love being an ultrasound sonographer. See you next time.